The arena offers some of the most challenging and frustrating content in Horizon Forbidden West. It's also the source of some of the best weapons and outfits in the entire game, since you can only purchase them with arena medals, and of course, if you're after 100% completion, you'll need to beat each of the 20 challenges. While you certainly can turn the difficulty down to story and blow through them, many of us, myself included, want to complete the arena on the same difficulty we play the rest of the game on. This creates a frustrating situation for many players, since the arena requires different tactics than what we're used to using in normal gameplay. The five fixed loadout challenges in particular are especially challenging and give people the most trouble. So in this video, I'll walk you through a method for completing each of those. Plus, we'll cover the tips you'll need to complete the open loadout challenges as well. Everything I show you will be done on ultra hard difficulty, so you can be sure it will work on any difficulty level. By the end of the video, you'll have everything you need to master the arena. So let's go. First, it's important to understand that the arena requires a playstyle you would almost never use anywhere else in the game. For example, if you typically play with stealth tactics, unfortunately they won't really work in the arena. The challenges must be completed under the time limit, which means playing recklessly and using expensive items like advanced ammo, potions, and traps is encouraged. Fortunately, the arena gives us back all of our resources after finishing a challenge, so there's no downside to using those items. Unfortunately, playing recklessly also means we're going to die. A lot. This is just something you're going to have to expect and get comfortable with. But to avoid burning through a ton of shards, I recommend making a manual save before diving into a session of arena grinding. Once you've burned through all your shards, you can simply load up your manual save to get them all back. Or you could always use the inventory duplication exploit to get yourself a few million shards and never worry about it again. I'll link that video down below. Okay, let's dive into the tips and tactics you'll want to use to get through the open loadout challenges, some of which will also be helpful for the locked loadout ones. First off, even though you can can access the arena pretty early, I wouldn't recommend attempting it until you're at least level 35 or so. Before that, Aloy's health is just so low that you'll easily get killed by a single hit in many of the challenges. You should also visit Thornmarsh first, where you can find some of the best weapons available for purchase. A few in particular will make your experience in the arena much easier. My top recommendation is the Elite Ropecaster, which can be used to immobilize even the biggest machines for up to 90 seconds. This is incredibly valuable in challenges with multiple enemies, which most of them have, so you can deal with one one enemy at a time. You'll also want a good sharp shot bow for dealing damage with regular shots and either the brace shot or focus shot weapon techniques. The glow blast will also give you access to tear precision arrows, and the delta has advanced precision arrows for higher damage. A spike thrower is a good idea too, and you can pick up the pulverizing in Thornmarsh as well. Advanced explosive spikes combined with the spike trap or spreading spike weapon technique offer very high damage output. You'll also definitely want frost arrows to freeze machines into the brittle state for increased damage. Of course, the legendary Sun Scourge would be best, but the Seeker Hunter Bow found in Fall's Edge is your next best option. You'll want to upgrade it to at least level 3 to gain access to advanced frost arrows. As for an outfit, I'd recommend the Nora Valiant as a great all-arounder, though it is weak to plasma and frost, which can matter for certain challenges. Don't forget about Valor Surges either. You'll start each challenge with zero Valor, but you'll often build up enough to trigger a Surge, so I'd recommend having Ranged Master ready to go for an extra damage boost. The Hunter Toolkit is also very important for the arena. Using a combination of smoke bombs and traps can get you through many of the challenges. Simply pop a smoke bomb, set up a bunch of traps, bait the machines into them, and repeat. Not very elegant, but definitely effective. Health, stamina, cleansing, and overdraw potions are also all very helpful, so you'll definitely want to make sure you have your preferred potions loaded up before dropping in. I definitely recommend heading into all challenges with a full set of smoke bombs. Food shouldn't be ignored either. In addition to healing, food can boost skills that will make your time in the arena easier if you haven't already maxed them out with skills, outfit perks, or weaves. Some of my picks for the arena would be Local Stew, Grazer's Bounty, Fireclaw Stew, and the Great MRE. I'll link my friend Plusle's spreadsheet down below that lists all the food items Items, what they do, and where to get them. It's also smart to prepare some things on the platform before dropping in. You can craft traps and potions up here, and also set up your weapon quick swap so you can toggle between two weapons instantly by tapping L1. As you'll see, preparing on the platform is one of the tactics we're going to use for the locked loadout challenges. When jumping off the platform, keep in mind you can deploy the glider and then cancel, or aim a weapon to avoid Aloy doing the time-wasting landing animation. Before we jump into those locked loadout challenges, I just want to make it clear that the methods I'm going to show you are designed to help you beat the challenges as easily as possible on your desired difficulty level. These aren't the same tactics you would use if you were trying to post a world record time. In fact, the methods used to get a top time are often very different from what you'll see here. If you are interested in posting a competitive time, I've recorded my top 10 global finishes on ultra hard for each of the challenges, and I'll be releasing those videos separately from this one, so keep an eye out for those. With that said, let's learn how to beat the locked loadout challenges as simply as possible, starting with rematch. 
Okay, so first for rematch, we want to start off by crafting three elite purge water bombs. I'm going to replace the blast bombs with three of those. We'll craft those right now. Traps made. And then I'm just going to switch back to the smoke bombs so we have those ready to go. Now the two main weapons we're going to use are the frost arrows on the warrior bow and the piercing shredders on the shredder gauntlet. We'll drop in here and glide and then cancel it to avoid the slow animation. Pop a smoke bomb right away. And then we're just going to place all three of our traps here while we have an opening. The Slither Fang can't attack us because it's confused. Makes it very easy. And then we're just going to bait him in. All right, that's a nice chunk of damage to start with. We're going to go straight to our shredders now. And when you're using the shredders, you want to target the middle third of the Slither Fang's body because it's susceptible to knockdown damage. You can see I made an adjustment there to target the middle third and it caused a stagger. And then if we keep targeting it, it will trigger a knockdown like this, which lasts 12 seconds. Makes it very easy to target components like this purge water sack. Exploding that got us enough valor to trigger our valor surge, elemental fury, which is gonna make it easier for us to use our frost arrows to build up the brittle state. I'm gonna do three burst fire weapon techniques and then one, two regular shots. There it is, there's the second one, that's enough to freeze him. And then while he's frozen, we can deal a lot more damage up to two times. So I'm going to start off my next cycle of shredders with a triple shredder weapon technique just to do some more damage. Don't want to use that on every throw because it won't let you start building up higher damage by uh, catching the cycles with the shredder and get the explosion like that on the fourth throw. So we got another knockdown there, crafting some more shredders while these three are coming back, targeting some components while he's down to do a little bit of extra damage. If you guys want tips on how to use Shredder Gauntlets more effectively, I'll link my Shredder Gauntlet Masterclass video down in the description. So again, we want to be targeting the middle third of his body or so. We're trying to build up more knockdowns and staggers so that he can't really attack us very easily. He's going to get this one in, but we can dodge it. There we go, there's our third knockdown. You can see how that prevented him from doing an attack. We also got enough Valor to do the Valor Surge again. I'll craft some more Frost Arrows. And then we're gonna do one, two, three Burst Fires, and then one, two regular shots, we'll freeze him. Craft some more Shredders. Do a nice triple Shredder right to the middle of his body while he's down. And keep going. We'll sneak one in here while he's burrowing. Slide dodge out of the way. And hit him with the explosion when he pops up. And at this point, we're really just trying to deal damage as fast as we can. As well, he's still frozen. We get a, up to a two times multiplier while he's frozen, so we definitely want to get in our shredder throws as fast as possible. There we go, that's our fourth knockdown. And he should be almost done here. There it is. Okay, so we did that in just under 222, and just take note that my time at the bottom there, that 7th place finish, is not this run that's using different tactics. Okay, so up next we have From the Deep, two Snap Maws, and a Tide Ripper in this one. Kind of tricky because they have a lot of ranged attacks that can be pretty annoying. So we're going to start out by crafting five Elite Vertical Shock Traps. Craft five of those, we're going to do that right now. And then I'm going to grab my healing potions back, replace the overdraw potions with them, and then just switch back to the smoke bombs so they're ready to go. Now you'll see me use the blast sling not to deal damage, but to trigger the traps if the machines don't trigger them on their own. And then we have two warrior bows here, which I'm going to switch to the spread shot weapon technique. Those can be useful if we manage to freeze any of the machines to deal some damage, but our main damage dealer is going to be the spike thrower, particularly with the spike trap weapon technique that you'll want to hit the enemies with directly to do the most damage. So now it's just a matter of waiting for one of the snap mods to get near the Tide Ripper or vice versa, which we have right here. So we're going to drop in, pop a smoke bomb right away, and then position ourselves so we can hit at least two of the enemies at once with the vertical shock trap. Just one of them is enough to freeze the Tide Ripper or uh, shock the Tide Ripper. There you go. We can see that there. I'm going to do another smoke bomb here actually just to make it easy for me to put a shock trap between the two snap maws. Hit that with a, a bomb to trigger it. We shocked both snap maws there. 
And then I'm going to put a Shock Trap next to the Tide Ripper. Dodged out of the way there to avoid taking damage myself. You might have caught it on the right. We actually killed one of the Snap Maws there. Dodged again to avoid taking damage. So now I'm just going to try and bait this Snap Maw over so I can damage both it and the Tide Ripper at the same time. They like to jump like this, so it's pretty easy to bait them. Put up another trap here. Get out of the way. Trigger it with a bomb. There goes the second Snap Maw. So now we just have the Tide Ripper left to deal with. So I'm going to try and get a, uh, a uh, trap in here. One of the blast traps that we're given. He does hit it. But I wasn't able to get any more bombs than that. I'll try and get another one in here. Now that didn't work out. He blew it up with his Purge Water Blast. So I'm just trying to reposition here. Now this is actually a mistake. I meant to heal here. I didn't mean to put a trap down there. So that's just a quick mistake. We can put some traps out here. And then I'm going to switch to using the Spike Thrower to deal some damage directly to the Tide Ripper. I'm going to target the Purge Water Sacks on its neck. You could also target the Purge Water Sacks on its side. That's the Spike Trap weapon technique there. And again. And he's down. So we did that in about 142, which is well under the 330 time limit. All right, we're up to Tremor Tusk Tussle here. We have two Claw Striders, Acid Claw Striders, and of course the Tremor Tusk in this one. Now, this can be really annoying if the Tremor Tusk calls in three Burrowers as reinforcements. So you may want to target its antennas first to disable that ability. We're going to go ahead and craft five Elite Purge Water Traps. And then I'm going to grab my Healing Potions back and switch to the Smoke Bombs. Now the key to this one is the rope caster. So we're going to use that to get the tremor tusk tied down first. And then I'm also going to tie down all the claw striders to just immobilize everybody. To kill the claw striders, you want to primarily use the shock bolts, but you may also use some shredders or the spikes can be good for that too. Either the drill spikes or the explosive ones. But again, we're going to just start out by tying everybody down with the rope caster. Okay, we'll drop in, glide and cancel it. Pop a smoke bomb just to immobilize everybody. And then I'm using the penetrating rope weapon technique here. You can see my stamina decreasing in the bottom right there. We can get three ropes off that way. And then we'll have to use regular ropes to tie him down the rest of the way. So the Tremor Tusk is down now. He's down for 90 seconds, so we don't have to worry about him. I'm going to go ahead and tie down the Claw Striders as well, because they're super annoying. Jumping at you like that. Takes two ropes to get these guys down. There you go, you can see why you want to rope them down. All that jumping gets pretty annoying. Now you see me slide here, that's using the quick draw weapon mechanic, which allows you to draw your weapons a little bit faster for free. I'll link my 8 secret combat mechanics video down below if you want to learn more about that. We're going to kill these guys with shock bolts. Shock bolts are nice because, of course, when you deal damage they become untied, but then they get shocked, and it's very easy to keep them immobilized this way. You can target the sack on their chest or their eye to deal a little bit of extra damage. And we just need a little bit more on this guy. And that's the first one down. Reload the Bolt Blaster. Target the next one. You want to try to avoid hitting armor plates when you do this so that you don't get your damage reduced too much. Again, the eye can give you a little bit of a damage multiplier if you can manage to hit it. That's the second one down, so now we just have the Tremor Test to deal with. While he's still tied up, I'm going to go ahead and load up some Frost Bolts to get ready for him. But the first thing we're going to do is go set up three Elite Purge Water Traps nearby. Not too close, you don't want him to trigger them by accident. This is a good safe distance. We'll get away, and then I'm going to trigger those with an arrow. That does a nice chunk of damage to him. Pop another Smoke Bomb so we can set up some more traps. And actually, I think I'm going to rope him here again just to make things really easy. Again, I'm using the penetrating rope weapon technique there. You can see the stamina decreasing in the bottom right. Another smoke bomb. I'm gonna go for some regular rope shots here because we lost our stamina when we got hit. Again, there's that quick draw while I'm sliding so I can draw the rope caster faster. He's down again. This would be a good opportunity to take those antennas off if you've been having problems having the burrowers come out. But I'm going to go ahead and set up some traps here. Get a safe distance away and trigger him. 
And now we're going to go to our frost bolts because I want to freeze him. This can be a little bit tricky. It's definitely slow to use the bolt blaster. I'd recommend either positioning yourself behind him or directly in front of him so you can't get hit by these rockets as much as I am. Using another smoke bomb can help too. And the sustained burst weapon technique. So now I'm going to go for drill spikes and we have enough to trigger our power shots valor surge. This is super high damage combo right now. Especially if you can hit a weak point like that point on top of him. One more drill spike to the leg and he's down. So we did that in just about three minutes flat, which is well under the five minute time limit. All right, dreaded encounter one dread wing and two spike snouts in this one. We're going to go ahead and craft five elite vertical shock traps. I'll grab my healing potions back and switch to smoke bombs. Now we're going to rely on advanced shredders a lot in this one, particularly using the power shredder weapon technique. You'll see I'll kill one of the spike snouts with three power shredders. Then we're also going to use our bombs a lot to deal damage. And then we have two sharp shot bows available to us, the glow blast and then also the delta sharp shot bow, both of which I'm going to switch to the focus shot weapon technique. Those are good options for dealing damage as well. But again, our bombs and shredders will be primary. So we'll drop in, target one of the spike snouts with power shredders through the fence immediately. We can throw through that fence, no problem. That's three power shredders and that one's down. Okay, I'm going to switch to bombs here for the other spike snout, but then the dreadwing lands and I'm going to go for a trap play here that actually doesn't work out. So I pop a smoke bomb, put two vertical shock traps down, which I intend to shock the dreadwing with, but because I explode the spike snout sack there, it doesn't end up hurting the dreadwing which is unfortunate, but we're just gonna finish off this spike snout with some bombs. There we go, he's down. So we just have the Dreadwing to deal with at this point. So I'm gonna position myself kind of in the middle, pop another smoke bomb and put down at least two vertical shock traps. It only takes two to shock the Dreadwing, but I'm just gonna put the third one down here because it would be wasted otherwise. He likes to jump across the arena, so it's pretty easy to bait him in. I'm gonna sneak in a focus shot here with my sharp shot bow. And he's shocked. Now while he's down, you definitely want to get off the antenna on his back so that he can't call in reinforcements when he gets low on health. So we're going to get that off. There we go. And I'll just target some other components while he's still down here. And at this point, it's really about just dealing damage to the Dreadwing as fast as possible. We're going to go for some bombs here, hit the components on his chest. If we can manage to explode that Metal Bite sack, that's really nice. And the bombs are good for that because they deal area of effect damage, so you don't actually have to have a direct hit. You also do want to keep your distance here because when he does his ground slams, they can be really hard to avoid. They have a very large area of effect, so you definitely want to keep your distance while he's on the ground. Don't forget you have your shredders with the power shredder weapon technique too. I'm crafting some extras here and then we're going to go for a power shredder. Just caught him on the back of the leg there. That was pretty nice to keep him on the ground. And we got a knockdown on him. Now I'm gonna try and hit the metal bite sack here, but it's not the best angle. So I actually end up hitting his wing and dealing some damage to ourselves in the process. That's all right though, we're just gonna keep rolling. Some more shredder cycles. That's a good hit to the components on his chest. I'm gonna take a potion here because I'm pretty low on health and I'm also pretty close to him. So I'm worried that he might do some ground slams, which he does. So it's a good we took that potion. Get a little bit out of the way here. Switch back to our bombs. He should be almost done here. Not much health left. And there it is. All right, last but not least, we have Apex Predators, the top level legendary challenge. We're gonna craft five elite acid traps and eight advanced purge water traps. And I'm also going to grab the five advanced blast traps that we get for free and then switch back to my smoke bombs. Now, the trick with this one is even though we have an elite canister rope caster, we can still use this to tie down enemies using the penetrating rope weapon technique. So we're going to use that first to immobilize the thunder jaw. Once we have the thunder jaw tied down, we're going to use a combination of blast sling bombs and traps to kill the scorcher. And then we're going to switch back to focusing the thunder jaw with our the remaining blast sling bombs and the sharp shot bow is our other tool for dealing, dealing damage. So we're going to switch to brace shot and you're going to want to use the glow blast arrows because it doesn't matter which arrows you use with brace shot. 
but we can also use the regular precision arrows and the terror precision arrows. The last thing we're going to leverage is the fire light arrows to trigger the blaze canisters on the Thunderjaw's belly. I'll show you where those are in a second. But first we're going to start by tying the Thunderjaw down. So we'll highlight some components on the Scorcher and then I'll find those blaze canisters. There they are on the Thunderjaw's belly. Remember where those are. And we'll just highlight the rest of the components here. And now we just kind of want to wait for the Thunderjaw to be a little bit closer. Here he comes, this is a good position. Drop in, we'll sneak in a Blastling Bomb. And then I'm gonna pop a Smoke Bomb and we're going for our Penetrating Rogue Weapon Technique. We can get three shots off here, we have enough Stamina for that and then we're gonna have to drink a Stamina Potion. So that's one, two, three. Drink a Stamina Potion here. Get our fourth one off. So he is now down for 90 seconds. Watch out for that Scorcher, he likes to jump. So we're just gonna go for bombs on him to build up Knockdown. We want to keep hitting him until he gets stunned with a knockdown. Careful not to hit the Thunderjaw while he's down. You don't want him to get released. Should just take a couple more bombs here to get this Scorcher knocked down. There we go. So I'm going to run up and put four Advanced Purge Water Traps right next to him. Not too close. You don't want him to get triggered by accident, but we're going to get four down as fast as possible and then get out of the way. He's going to trigger him on his own. We could also trigger them with the bomb. And he's pretty close to dead now. We just want to finish him off with some bombs. Also could use brace shots or regular um, sharp shot bow shots with the precision arrows. But I do like to save those for the Thunderjaw for the most part. There we go. The Scorcher's down. The Thunderjaw still has a little bit of tie down left. So I'm going to put two acid traps down, elite acid traps. It takes two of these to get the Thunderjaw corroding. Pretty easy to bait him into them because he likes to charge across the uh, arena to attack you. So there we go, we have him corroding. And at this point, we're trying to build up a knockdown just like we did with the Scorchers. So I'm using Blastling Bombs as much as I can. I'm actually out of regular bombs now, so I'm gonna use the rest of my advanced ones. Keep circling around him so that he can't target you with the cannons. I'm actually out of bombs at this point, so I'm going to switch to those glow blast arrows to get off some race shots. These can trigger knockdowns as well. Should just take one or two more here. I'm just waiting for my stamina to build up. Here we go. And he's down. So as soon as he's down, we want to run up with our fire light arrows and target those canisters on its belly. If the canisters aren't off, then you may need to take them off with a precision tear arrow or bombs. Um, they're, they're covered by plates, but the corroding from the acid will take the plates off if you do enough of it. I dodged out of the way there to avoid taking damage myself. He's also now corroding again, which is good. And now I'm just using regular precision arrows to deal some damage to components on the Thunderjaw. Another smoke bomb there. I'm going to target the disc launchers with some tear arrows. You could also drink your overdraw potion before you start doing this to deal a little bit of extra damage. But it should only take two shots. We got one of them off. Target the other one. That's both of them off. So at this point, we're really just trying to deal as much damage as we can. The Thunderjaw has a big health pool. So we kind of just have to keep dodging across the arena here. You'll notice, of course, the more components you take off, the more weapons you take off, the less he has to use and he'll, the more he'll charge you, especially using this uh, laser attack here. You can dodge through that to avoid taking damage. I'm going to set up some more traps here. Since I've got them, might as well do some damage with them. Just trying to keep my distance. Build up stamina so that I can do brace shots and get a good angle so I can launch off precision arrows, regular precision arrows, to deal some damage to components. Definitely nice to have those components highlighted so that it's easier to target them. Get another trap in here. And there's another one. Timing the dodges on the traps definitely takes some practice but it can be done for sure. Interrupted his attack there, that's pretty nice. Drinking a stamina potion so I can do another brace shot. 
snuck that in before we got hit. And we're just about to get another brace shot here. He should be pretty close now. We're just going to get a few more shots on him with regular precision arrows. Accidentally shot a glow blast arrow there. Definitely not what I wanted to do. Just missed the component there, the radar. And he's down. So we did that in 417, which is well under the 730 time limit. Alright guys, that's my guide to mastering the arena. I hope you found the walkthroughs for each of the locked loadout challenges helpful, as well as the general tips you can use for the open loadout challenges. And if you have an arena tip you want to share, definitely leave a comment down below. As always, thank you for watching, and I'll catch you in the next one.